Greetings, beings of all planes. I'm Shane. 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 And I'm your recapper, Shane. Welcome to Harken Back. Afflicted and bleary-eyed from the challenges of Shreya's repristination, the agents of repair took stock of the impending threats, both cataclysmic and provincial, and determined the Mind Flayer nest below Saddle Mount to be the most pressing danger. What exactly is our goal here, though? What do we want to do when we get in there? I thought we wanted to know why they wanted your blood. We know that Kodam Vo is a lieutenant of some sort to the Red Wolf, right? Yes. He was consorting with a Mind Flayer that we know of. Uh, you assume they're connected. That's what, that's the main thing we want to find out. We want to find out Is if they're part of Is there a connection? This. Wary of another headlong sprint into unplumbed peril, the party returned to Hayfried's goopy void to put themselves back together and get what information they could from their grizzled benefactor. Their face couldn't be judged, and even uh, when I tried to find them by magical means, I, I couldn't um, secure my eyes on their visage. That sounds like the Kodam Vo. The thinking behind it is that anyone could be this person. It's a position to aspire yourself to within their ranks. The orders come from what seems to be one person, but no one really knows who that person is, creating a, a sort of intrinsic uh, trust and mistrust at the same time in the pursuit of their scientific knowledge. Aye. Sort of saying you can't take uh, any one person's word as gospel, and in the scientific approach, you have to always be questioning, and you shouldn't be afraid of one person, so they remove that aspect of themselves. Well, but isn't it a bit intimidating that they have all these faces? Is, is that really... Uh, I, like I said, it effect? works with and against their purpose. Right. Seeker found a quiet corner and cogitated on the power of his religious artifact, becoming suddenly engulfed in the object's magic as well as memories of his nascent self. You roll over. You feel the comfort of soft sheets over your shoulder. Just woken up one early morning, looking around. You see your room. What are you doing? By the gods, what is this? You see across the room your father's temple that he himself has hand curated to his specifications in service to Lauris. Motions for you to come and kneel next to him. M me? Yeah, come here. And you kneel down next to him and he's got this plasma all over his hand. This purple glow and he reaches out towards you and you recoil in fear, but that was the child. Now you lean into it mm -hmm. as he places his hand to your chest. You feel the warmth all around your chest, your shoulders, as he looks into your eyes and says, I will always be here to protect you. And you snap out of it. You look around and you see nothing but void around you and a little totem in front of you. Thessaly was finally furnished with fiery flamberges forged fantastically by their feisty philanthropist and flew forthwith into furiously fanning flames from their foibles until fuming feathers flared from her form. Can I pick them up now? Uh, yeah, go for it. You look at both of the swords and they almost look like they have been shattered and glued back together, but the glue running throughout looks like lava. Do I see a sort of like training? I, I know Hayfried has a lot of platforms. Is there one with like dummies or yes, something there is. there? Yes, oh, there is. There. And you swing at one of these dummies and just as you swing at it, it takes a jagged turn and moves right out of your range and you miss. You got to do better. I like bite back a curse and I'm like, hmm. You swing again and your, your brain did not comprehend that this is the hand that your short sword is in and you swing and you miss. <clears throat> like I huff in frustration and you said that there were like, uh, it's all on the same platform, right? Yes. So there are stationary dummies, right? Yes, there are. So I'm going to walk over to one of the stationary dummies that is clearly intended for archery and I'm going to like <laughs> try to cut the head off of it. Okay. Uh -huh. um, you swing into it once and your sword drives in a couple of inches. Mm -hmm. And as you pull it back out, um, you see that the inside is sort of made of, of like hay and mm -hmm. some rope. And the outside is made of this like very thin burlap. And as soon as you bring your sword back out, you can see the rope and the hay sort of merge back together and oh. heal itself as soon as you pull it back out. You take the second swing with your other sword. You take another swing, another swing, another swing. And as you keep pulling the, the swings in and out of this dummy, mm -hmm. it begins to catch fire. 
as you continue swinging and swinging and swinging, you, you get into this rhythm of re-familiarizing yourself with the balance of these swords. You're swinging, making these cuts, you're making jabs. Um, Seeker and Shrai, you look over, and as Thessaly's back is facing you, and she's attacking this, this dummy, you begin to see her back begin to glow, a dull orange. The flames that are now whipping off of this dummy almost begin to whip in tandem with flames now forming on her back. As you look over and you can see just a very gentle glow of flaming wings. Meanwhile, Kallik sought out his own renewal in the precarious hallowed halls of the Temple of Famir. You're as mortal in your vulnerabilities as I've come to know, and you must too be capable of mortal forgiveness. These Red Wolf fanatics would like to point to this war as a demonstration of your incompetence. Not only can you not save them from the other side, but your petty, pathetic charlatans that thought you could keep the pace between hundreds of thousands of people forever. That you failed, and that you were destined to. But you haven't failed. Not yet. Darkness is not the absence of light, but the distance between two beacons of it. The choice is not between two sets of bloody deities. The choice is between malice and compassion, selfishness and fellowship, apathy and vulnerability. The choice is between walking the path of least resistance, watching the world burn, profiting off the pain of others, or taking up arms and choosing to fight, to repair it, to suffer, to repair it, to risk everything to repair it. And it's a choice we must make again and again. I... I'm Kelexaist, and I am an agent of repair. Make me the champion that you know me to be. Make me a walking reminder that no chasm is too wide to bridge, no wound too bloody to heal, no war too prolonged to pacify. And I plunge my hand into this water, my burnt hand of Zachriel, to once again grab hold of this symbol in the scar that it fits directly into. Make me the champion of Zachriel and Vamir! The champion of both gods! I'm so sorry I wasn't there for you when you needed me. <gasps> what? What? Uh, no, no, wait. No. Deal. As your hand begins to burn once more. Not so downtrodden by recent events, the younger party members tarried in the outskirts of Saddle Mount. Flynn, trying out some new spell technique, and I will pull my book out and uh, start looking over things and land on a few descriptions that I've looked at in the past and I've kind of been focusing my energy when I've been sitting down to study. I, I rub my fingers together and the uh, abjuration sigil kind of glows very briefly and um, similar to shield, I will raise my hand up really quick, um, quicker than normal and um, giving it less time to uh, procure the magic um, and uh, uh, the the shimmer of the abjuration glows. But with shield, how it stays for a little bit longer, this energy basically just shows for but a moment and it, and it evaporates into the into the wind um, as I use my ability uh, arcane deflection. And putting my feet in the water and okay. I'm walking, I'm, I'm kind of splashing my legs along the shore. Campbell! And I'm going to jump into the water. Go on! Flynn! <laughs> and I, um, I create a wave to like crash <laughs> over him <Okay>. um, <laughs> with shape water. <laughs> All right. I will swim up and I, uh, can I hop up uh, and sit next to Oma? Yeah. So I will, I will kind of, oh, now I'm kind of cold. Ooh, do you have some of that fire? Fire? Right right now? I don't know. Yeah, cold. I, oh, get your cloak. Fire needs wood to burn. I mean, I, you can't, I don't think you can't just make things that don't, it needs fuel. My fire is hot and oh. it will burn. Okay. Well, that's kind of what I want. I'm cold. Okay, but it will hurt you if I don't have something to put it on. <laughs> uh, I right. can't just throw Flynn. fire on you. Flynn, as you are arguing with Oma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Typical. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
for one of the first times that you've known Ulma, um, you are not in immediate danger. There's not anything you need to go and kill. There is no evil that needs to be stopped. You, for the first time since you met her, um, see a kid playing at the beach. Back in Marstock, the crows Raya had enlisted came back with a gift of sorts. Yeah, we all got, check this out, and he sh- sort of shakes a little bit. And you can see just in between the feathers, like these, these tiny pinpoint shards of crystal. We got plenty. And he sort of shakes again, and a couple of things of crystal fall out. Oh. Oh, as I walk toward the crystals and and uh, kneel down by them and stare into them. And, and as you kneel down and as you stare into them, they almost sort of fuse together and you just see the hint of a face. I'm staring into this face and as I do, I look directly into the eyes. My body, my whole body starts to shake as the ground immediately around me also starts to shake. And within these eyes, I recognize this what I have been taught and learned to be the, a, a fey creature of some kind. As I peer deep into the eyes and as I see the mouth, the mouth purses its lips and slowly blows. Uh, the wind that comes out of this face slowly forms these crystal geometric patterns that slowly work their way over to me. And the second that uh, contact is made, my staff, which was just by my side, uh, shatters and becomes synonymous with the crystals themselves that are next to me. I look around as I try to... What's going on? As I sift through the, the crystals on the ground and all of a sudden I look down at my skin and the geometric patterns that were once on the staff are now slowly starting to populate the areas of my skin. The staff starts to re-piece itself together from the crystals that were on the ground and I'm slowly pulling myself up it piece by piece. But with his new power, the cacophonous messengers also brought ill tidings of Shrya's homeland, rekindling the debate about where to turn first. Uh, yes. The dwarves, they were, uh, they were carrying a bunch of uh, like military equipment up there and uh, it seemed like uh, your people up there, the, the ones that you were calling your family, were, uh, they seemed to be getting themselves ready for war, but man, if you ask me, there's just not enough of them, and the tools that they've got at their disposal are not going to be enough. Try it. Aren't, aren't you from the Vanville Rise? Yes, that's where I'm from. Well, if the Kaldorian army is going there, that's where one of the gates to the plane of air is, where there might be another key. That's so, right. So we should... We can go. We can go and help you, and 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 protect the area. That's right. And I throw my head back. But the members of my tribe may not be so keen on keeping the portal from being opened again, because those who wish to remain here, they were not treated well, and there are very few of us left. Do you think opening the gate is the right thing for your people? I was raised in a family that had some kind of connection to this world that was unexplainable. We were kept alive as a sort of familial and ancestral experiment. And uh, I take it Tito is one and the same. I do believe that the magic had emerged in him, and the chieftain had thought that perhaps the magic that we possessed in our wing of the tribe had it almost jumped into the other side of the tribe, which is why he was celebrated. In essence, it was believed that perhaps he could be the one to reopen the connection. Tito might be the key to the gate. I don't oh. know. These are just legends from my elders. If we're not trying to hurt the nest and we're just trying to talk to them and get them to stop helping the Strada Periana. Oh. Well done, oh. Oma. Then, then we might be able to at the same time reach out to Xavier and see if he can open up a portal that's closest to the Vanville Rise. While we ask Xavier to go and open up another portal, we we can we can deal with the the mind flayers. And the debate did not stop there. Upon hearing of Kellick's new pact, Desily found her hands poised on the hilts of her new weapons. If they're able to work so well together, why haven't they done it until now? Well, I don't know that it, they're going to work that well together. That is why I don't feel so well, I believe. Kalik is really good at convincing people to work together. I mean, he brought all of us together. So you're their mediator? They're they're both using you? Feels a bit like I'm at either end of a, a piece of meat between two uh, feuding pups. Oh. And you've... Why would you do that? It was a compulsion. Like the compulsion you had with the sheep demon thing? Like that? I put my hand on your shoulder, Thess. 
Get to walk outside with me for a moment. I take one last look at Kellogg, and I look around at everybody else. Fine. With bated breath, they followed Oma down the rocky cliff face to the tunnels she'd explicitly asked they not return to. Do you see how this is the outline of the cave right here, and this with the with the face and the tentacles and the X uh-huh. in blood? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the nest, and the door is over there. Okay. Um. Why is that blood? Well, I got it from people who died. Within, they found that someone or something had replaced the fear gas producing device that Olma had retrieved previously. And the tunnels were even more overrun with bone dissolving jellies than before. Worse, once they locked themselves in to the mind foyer, foyer, they were quickly set upon by unusual hook horrors, with an emphasis on the horror. Flynn, you see two hook horrors yeah. drop okay. to the ground with a splat. Seemingly unconscious, the tops of their heads completely removed. <gasps> you see their brains exposed. What? And as you look at their brains, you all see a purple worm-like tadpole. No! no. Crawling no. around its brain. No. I don't look at that. No. I, co- I cover my as eyes, each of these, very much. As each of these tadpoles sink their teeth into <gasps> the brains, the hook horrors spring to life. They look at all of you wide-eyed with a milky haze over their eyes. Dispatching of the disfigured cave dwellers, the agents of repair descended further, discovering a recess where it appeared a giant brain once perched, with some intriguing aberrations in the chamber from which it was missing. So I'm not going to act like I know what's going on here, and yes, there's this big thing which maybe had a brain or whatever, but that thing up there, I mean, if I was going to take something from a place, that that's kind of probably how I would do it. You're suggesting somebody dug down, put a harness on a giant brain and, and lifted it out? I mean, that seems as probable as the big brain being underground in the first place. Who would want to steal a big brain? Brain from mind flayers. What does the brain do? Do you know? Well, I, I don't know. It stands to reason that uh, a bunch of creatures that infiltrate minds would have some kind of, um, at least, a symbolic reverence for a giant brain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That tracks a little bit. I don't care who stole the brain. We got to get out of here now. Olma. Why? Yeah. <gasps> because there's all these creatures in tubes that are missing half their brains, and that thing that was calling for help has only half of a brain, and there was a worm crawling around in its head okay, and we two things, two things. They crept toward the gallery of captured humanoids, Flynn and Kellick desperate to save those they could, but the clicks of the Mind Flayer's boots and mandibles put a constraint on their time. Do you want to try to take one person out that has the full brain and see if we can... Uh, maybe they can be saved. I. Uh, Why I, not do it here? It's Look, a, it's, I understand it might be traumatic, but we have to see what the capacity is for what we are saving. It might be better to wait. They can climb, potentially. Yeah, that's true. They can be the agents. But should we try own. and open up one of the... I think that's uh, one thing at a time, we, and we may have to cut our losses here. I, we don't know how... This place, there's there's how many? 30? If these 40 illi- mind flayers? If they in come it? in and kill everybody anyway right after we free them, it's useless What's as well. What's the point? Aye. As all of a sudden, the oh. eyes bolt open. Oh. Ah! Ah! Okay. I cast calm emotions. Okay. Okay. I'll cover her mouth if I can. Hi, hi there. I'm Kellick. This is Finn. Hi. What's your name? As you look, and those who still have their eyes open as they're pretending to be dead see an illithid walking into this room. Great. Oh. They look around, surveying the bodies on the ground. The second one comes in. As it turns to the other one, the other one responds. They both leave the room, none of you understanding what language they are speaking. What? And you can hear their boots continue to walk down the hallway. I just lift my head up ever so slightly wide-eyed at Flynn. I just wide as mouth, we have to move. After an encounter where Kellick nearly had his identity stolen by one of these two messin-headed squid wizards, the agents of repair followed the path taken by the mysterious giant brain thieves, and it led them right back to the lab beneath the lighthouse. Until eventually you can see a bit of light at the end of the tunnel where the rail comes to a close. You walk back into this laboratory that you all had been in once more. Wow. You see off to the left, this big machine still smoldering and a little bit of the smoke sort of carrying its way down the tunnel. Um, you look around the laboratory. Doesn't seem like anyone's here. You listen. Doesn't seem to be any sounds of people. They escaped the nightmarish underground. But the fading vibrance of the setting sun indicated the approach of Elbor's yearly holiday, the Long Eve. Shreya, as you take a breath out, you see your breath on the air. Kellogg, you look to the sky, and you see the sun about two hours from setting, much, much more dim than it normally is. And as you all look up, 
you see the first couple of flakes of snow falling oh. as the long eve is just about to begin. Soon the sun would disappear altogether for ten days. So, Seeker reconnected with his sibling and subterfuge, Baron, to see what was known about mind flayers around town. Are you familiar with the mind flayer? Um, yeah, there's been one sort of going around town with uh, with another guy in a couple times recently. Yes. Not really something that you forget. Could use your help to maybe track their movement. We can put some feelers out and see... Is there a way for me to contact you if I find one? When you write this ink where you are, it will show up here. He scarcely had time to make it back to the group before he got his answer. I'll have my mage hand pull my scroll out and set it on the table. If any of you see this ton gold and the, the ends of it are silver, you see this ton gold, say something. Because that means someone's contacted me. How it we... turns gold. Oh. oh. <gasps> oh. oh. It turns gold like that. like that. Your friend has been spotted at the council building. I mean, we could all go. Or we could send somebody who could be invisible to kind of listen. I don't like the idea of sending Olma in there alone just to be around a mind flayer after everything that just happened. You, the my main... hood is up. I have my hot cider. Olma it's disappeared with me and I'm sinking, sinking, sinking out. Olma followed the Kodam Vo and his mind flayer companion to an isolated room, wherein the man and the monster discussed their coming operations. Okay, new plan. I'm going to need you to cease your search for the threshold key of air. Seems that the young shaman has predicted has returned and there might not be any need for it. I'm going to send you to the Venville Rise. I'm going to need you to be my eyes and ears. Make sure everything goes according to plan. I have made Ilana aware of our next course of action and she has sent a group of Dark Blades to assist, but we know how incompetent they can be despite their skills. So I'm going to need you to ensure that everything is taken care of. But before that, a laboratory was attacked. I'm going to need you to awaken some of your people. Find whoever found the laboratory, find who destroyed it, and bring them to me. Our first suspects should be those who succeeded. They were the only ones who should know where the laboratory was. Here's a list, and as quickly as you can, make it to the Venville Rise. Once everything is succeeded, meet me back in Stillgate. Armed with this knowledge and their numbers advantage on the esteemed villain, the agents of repair performed their very first kidnapping, knocking the Kodam Vo down and quickly tying him in such a way that spellcasting was improbable. Do look down right where he's pulling up that little shoulder piece, yeah. and right under his neck you can see a brand. A brand that is very similar, though not exact, to one that you had seen before. Where did you get that? You look at the runes that are branded on his neck, and you understand that any damage inflicted to Kodam Vo, that same damage would be inflicted upon someone else, many other people. <gasps> you don't know. Uh, Seeker, be careful there. Mind your hands. Just knock him out. Alma, there's a mark on him there. A curse of some kind. I, I think it's... Uh... Loosely translated in undercommon, it means uh, harm brought to this creature befalls another. A curse? Oh. Well. I don't know the nature of it, but I suspect it's some kind of safeguard against attempts just like this one. Uh. This thing on my neck is the reason that you're all gonna let me out of here. Huh. Says you're gonna let me out of here, and you, points to Flynn. Huh? Says you're gonna be the one to do it. What? He certainly will not. Yeah, I'm not. You're staying here. For now, yeah. Yeah, for now. I'm confused. I would say, leave me here, come back, but make sure it's longer, not 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 longer than uh, a week. Um, I'd say, come back before a week and you'll be letting me out of this cage. But for now, you can leave me in here because that is exactly what this mark does as he points to the brand on his neck. And he says, this connects me to, gosh, at this point, who knows how many people. And here's the real kicker. If I'm not back in Stillgate by next week, all of those people are just gonna drop dead. With the Kodam Vo locked up for the time being, Flynn reached out to Zorkal for aid regarding the Mind Flayer nest and all the innocents still floating in tubes underground. Yeah, I, I also kind of know, I mean, I didn't pay attention too much when they were teaching us the history of the collective, but I do remember that Mind Flayers played a pretty big role in it, so I figured that it would probably, you know, make sense for us to take care of this problem. Yes, and I assume a lot of people who are in the Iron Light uh, are willing to, uh, Step up. Uh, step up and settle the score, as yeah. it was. Uh, as, uh, yes, I think. I uh, give Flynn kind of a cross us, look at this. As both of us probably thought, they were just a story, but. Yeah, definitely uh, not just a story. Okay. And thus, it was time to brave the cold of the coming long eve, to reach the Venville Rise in time to save Shrya's people and potentially close the gate to the plane of air. But, as usual, they'd first need a boat, something that could get them across the sea and up the river. 
In the rustic town of Autumn Hollow, all such seafaring vessels were moored for the holiday, save one. A familiar ship with a familiar captain. Kellick, <laughs> knock on the door. And from behind the door, um, you hear, I'll get the rest of your pay when you're done loading the ship. I told you this already five times. Is that Paston Broadhammer? You hear the voice yeah. of Paston no way. As he op- oh. swings the door open and says, how many times do I need to... Eh, hey, Kalik, me boy. <laughs> Paston. Aboard, the party had a moment to catch their breath before what would certainly be a grueling trek. But the chilling wind of discomfort pervaded their bedclothes. And not just because Thessaly had a boat field phobia. Um, where's, uh, where's Alma? Uh, I lost track of her, you know. Yeah, it tends to happen. <laughs> she escapes. I know we talked about it before, um, and, you know, thinking that he's, you know, better off with us because she's, you know, can blow up or whatever. But is that still true? I mean, we literally got her killed. Power like hers. It was going to take her somewhere. And it might have taken her to one of Kodan Vob's laboratories. Yeah, maybe. You know, I or to the war front. When you guys were in the void and, and we stayed outside, I went to look over my books and, and read, and she came with me, and, and we sat near a tree next to the water. And it was like the first time I've seen her be a kid, and I don't even know how long. And she deserves that, to be a kid. And I feel like what we're doing is we're teaching her how to be a, a killer. I think she knows how to be a killer, Flynn. That's what I'm afraid of. I think she knew it before she came upon us. So subjecting her to more of it is good. But it's unavoidable. I don't believe that. Here? Not if she's not here. I don't know. I just... Here on Elbor, then. <sighs> Amidst this war? Been gone on as long as you've been alive. Yeah, The but death is everywhere. I've been wanting to ask you, what exactly is the... What is the end goal here? What are we doing? Uh... Well, you came because I asked you, and Mm -hmm. I came back because I like them, and I think they make me better. I'm so used to doing this all on my own. And when I say this, I mean, like, not helping people, but myself. So this is just, what, you're expanding on that now? You're going to make make a job out of it? You're going to stop taking things in creative ways and be a hero? Yes, make right, and maybe find find my way back to uh, who I am. That's a big question. You seem to have picked up on all of this quite uh, easily. Mm -hmm. So why have you stayed? If you're questioning. First of all, I don't want you running off and getting killed. But... I do appreciate that. These friends of yours, and I guess by association, now mine, (laughs) feels weird to say, they seem to be... They want to help people. Yeah. To a fault, eh? We do some stupid stuff. Yes, we do. Cave of mind flayers, dragging people. I mean, who does that? Flynn, Flynn, Flynn Fellowweave and uh, Kellogg. And? And us now. Yes. Maybe we try to keep them alive. That's, That's why we're I here. Can do. They died. We <laughs> did not die. That's something I can do. <laughs> yes. Okay. And Seeker. Yes. The reason I don't like boats is because the last time I was on one, I didn't think I was going to get to leave. Did you not choose to be there in the first place? No. Does this have to do with uh, your old employment? And I'm just going to kind of sit silently. They made landfall and planned to pick up with Paston in the coming days. But as they ventured north, they found themselves following the footsteps of the Caldurian military. Seeker, you said you can send Elja, right? Yes. And she flies along the base of the mountain, and you can see just ahead of where you guys are, sort of just around this, this massive hill that leads into the mountain. She sees smokestacks rising up, and she sees hundreds and hundreds mm. of soldiers. Oh. They took a detour scaling a steeper climb and catching a shortcut through the bejeweled caves that fostered Shrya's exile. Despite their best efforts, they were too late. By the time they arrived in Shrya's village, the Dark Blades were already deep into talks with the elders, making plans for their ascent to the summit and the opening of the gate. I have returned as the representative of my family. I would like to know what's happening before we make any decision. Shrya, you have no right to speak here. You have desecrated your wings and your talons by leaving this sacred place. Shreya, I will be taking the tribe without you to the plane of air. These new allies have a way to do so, and one that we will take. Is the sacred one safe? And you can see just sort of in the back of the crowd, Tito kind of moves his shoulder forward through the crowd and steps forward. We have everyone from the tribe here safe. And Tito, 
and I give him a I give him a look. Do you trust that these over here who bear this symbol? Do you feel safe? Do you feel that you can trust them to perform one of the most sacred rites that we have ever been told of, that we have ever known? I know they can do it. I've seen it. I know they can do it. I know they can do it. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen they, they're able to do it. But another faction, led by their leader's son, Tubo, had formed, wishing to stay on the material plane, despite the encroaching engine of war. You may stay. You have clearly found your place here, in the dirt. But we are going back home, as Tubo steps forward. Father, some of us have been speaking. Some of us have, have found our place in this world. This is our, our home. We don't know the plane of air. I understand that it's sacred to you, but I feel no connection to it. There's no reason for me to, to go. I don't, I don't want to, and there's a group of us who we want to stay. How long have we talked about this? How long have we, have we dreamed? How long have you dreamed, Dad? We don't want to go, and you can't make us. This is our home. We will fight them if we must. Our numbers are not as strong or as experienced, but I, I want to believe that we can drive them off and protect our homes. Doesn't mean you have to stand here and await certain doom. This is our home. This is the only place that we know. We don't know Elbor. We know these cliff faces. We know these these airstreams. We know these clouds. Shraya knows lots of places, though. He knows them because he's been there and he learned them and so can you. He made home homes with wolves and he made homes with elves and forests, and he helped all of them. The tension of the moment weighed on Shraya, as he was uniquely qualified for the problem at hand. There is a power of chaos amassing in this world, greater than the Kaldurians, stirring to gather nothing but chaos and to burn all in its wake. You must know this, as the portal they seek to open may also be a portal for this untapped monstrous chaos to flow into this world. And you can trust that I can teach you the true nature of all this world has to offer. But first, we must defend her. We must defend Elbor from these agents of chaos. Will you join me? Drya, we have children here. Drya, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm, I'm helping these families and I don't see it anymore. I put up a good show for my father, but we have children here. We can't go marching towards agents of chaos and, and things raining down fire upon this world. At the end of it all, we just, we, if, if we want to keep our place here in the world, we need to go. We need to flee. And maybe it's time. What if we left this mountain, not as exiles from a world that doesn't want us, but as new family, new growth, into a world that could welcome us? When all was said and done, only one solution remained. We have found a, a third way. Unfortunately, this may mean that I part ways with all of you and cannot seek to help you close the portal. No. Though I do wish... The best of fortunes as you do. I cannot abandon my people who wish to remain here. No, they'll, no, they'll be fine. They can fly away. They can fly into a world of confusion. They can fly into a land they know nothing of. With me as their ally, they have the chance to become more than they ever thought possible. You're leaving us. I do believe it is the only way. Try a bade farewell. We've done a lot together. Yes, we have. I, um, I hope, I hope the Iron Light has helped... Um, has helped you, um, I'm gonna miss you, man. It's helped me. You've helped me. As you once told me, to our roots we are bound, but they might also set us free. You've made homes with wolves and elves and us in a goopy void. <laughs> You're worldly, Shia. What is it to make sense in a land you don't know? But to not be asleep with its inhabitants, being out of joint with time, might give you a clue as to its true nature, and toward the nature of the nature. With this last adieu to their avian ally, the agents of repair watched the final sunset before the long eve, a weight in their chests making them wonder if they could even make the coming climb, let alone get Shrya's people through the gate and close it behind them. As the air thinned, the gravity mounted and the sheer force of the swelling unknown threatened to push them from this picturesque precipice. Will they be able to keep Shrya's people safe? What about defeating the Dark Blades and preventing the expansion of the gate to the plane of air? And if they can make it through all of that, what about the goading threats of the Kodam Vo and his Mind Flayer coterie now on the hunt for them? Find out when we return next time on Venture Forth. Venture Forth